Hello, welcome to The Total You. I am your hostess, Evangelist Barise Wallace, and we're coming under the direction of Abundant Faith Cathedral, where our pastor is Bishop Joel T. Wallace. I want to thank you for tuning in today. I have a special guest with me today. Remember how we're saying it's the total you, your mind, body, soul, and spirit? Well, how God helps us to do the things we want to do. He puts those desires in our heart. Well, today we're going to talk about somebody who the Lord has blessed and given him his heart's desire. And that is none other than our own founder of Rick TV. Please introduce yourself for us. Hello, uh, my name is Chris Crawford, and I am the founder and co-owner of Rick TV. Uh, Rick TV stands for Real Internet Christian Community TV. Okay. It was a station that I started uh, maybe about a year and a half ago. It had a lot of bugs in it. Um, the Lord just gave me a vision. He was like, okay. okay, you need to create an affordable platform for people give them more for their money and have it a completely African-American oh. owned and ran uh, okay. station because um, unfortunately there's not a lot of African-American owned stations. Okay. I believe we need to control our own narrative. We need to put, you know, we need to take care of us. Okay. So this is the reason that I created uh, Rick TV. This is not a station where you're going to find a lot of mega pastors you're going okay. to find mid-level you know pastors okay. and you know pastors with smaller congregations okay we're trying to give it um, an avenue kind of. right give people an avenue for about maybe a thousand members and below okay you know okay. that's the kind of uh, ministries that we want to target okay. we're not trying to target the mega church mega churches <laughs> okay and even a thousand is a lot of people, but okay. you know, um, no more than a thousand people, you know, we'll have you know them come on um, the show if they want to have an affordable way to be broadcast. Okay, you said you started this about two years ago. What really? What you said? God gave you this plan, or? Yes. Well, looking at um, a couple different networks, I noticed that there just wasn't no representation of. The local ministries. Oh, okay. I mean, we have, okay, we see, without naming any names, we already know when we turn on major Christian platforms right. who you're going to see. Right. It's, it's really the same, maybe seven to ten ministers, and okay. you just see them over and over. Okay. But does that mean that God hasn't give somebody else a word? Okay. Does that mean that only the ones that we can see on TV now is the only, you know, ones that, okay, you know, you. can minister. So I need to open the platform up. But of course, for those spots that the mega churches are on, they're paying thousands upon thousands. I mean, they, they might have their own TV networks. They, to, they, yeah. they have networks, they have staffs. Um, matter of fact, I'm getting ready to work for a major <laughs> <laughs> network. I'm not going to mention their names on TV right okay. now, but I am starting a job at a major, you know, network okay. that's, that has a facility just as big as CNN. Okay. I took a tour and it's lavish. Okay. But still, those are not the only ministers, bishops, pastors with a word from God. Okay. We want to hit home. We want to go back to the local level, the community, the level. community level okay. to just bring the word. Everybody has something to say. Okay. And I know for a fact that uh, when we first started trying to get into broadcasting, they would charge us a whole lot of money and that's not accessible to that smaller community church. So. Right. That's good. Amen. So we thank you. We thank you for doing this for us. But how do you get out to these people? How do you get them to know that it's available to them? Well, right now we're we're a startup, you know, and as you know, we, we're running pretty. Um, it should be picking up in the summer where I'll have okay. time to advertise. OK, uh, my first trade 
you know, was a truck driver. Uh, okay. Just left um, Federal Express. Okay. And now I'm going to be full time into okay. a mega ministry um, broadcast along with, and that's going to help me help this one better. It's going okay. to help me know how to do things more efficiently. Okay. You know, on this network. So we're, we plan on growing and basically word of mouth within the next um, few months. So when we come back for season two, mm -hmm. which will be after the summer, okay, we're going to um, really promote and get more shows on here, especially okay. with my flexible schedule. All right. Now, you mentioned something about you being a truck driver before. Mm -hmm. Now, coming into doing this new project that you have, did you have any problems with this? How did it? How did God answer your prayer? Well, I've always been creative. Okay. So I've started with photography, and then I started with videos, shooting short films. Okay. Um, I shoot weddings, so I'm always already into film. So it wasn't like super new. The TV part of it was new. Okay. But the video aspect of recording and making movies and films was not new okay. at all. So um, it was an easy transition. It was a learning curve as in programming the show yes. and putting it out there. As you know, we're available on Apple, Amazon, and Roku, and okay. a website, okay. rick.tv, worldwide. Okay. You know, so... We're actually ahead of a lot of people being so small okay. and a lot of people don't know that we're in this little tiny room right now <laughs> and because the background changed when, okay. um, you know, so, okay. but we're doing some, I think we're doing some good things here and it's okay. starting to catch on. All right. So we got the word of mouth being spread abroad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you do, like you said, it's just the community. So if a person wanted to get in touch with you, how would they do that? They can go to rick.tv. Okay. They can go to contact and they can send a message on the form. Okay. That will be the easiest and best way. Okay. You know, because right now I don't have a business phone. It's just my personal cell phone. Okay. I'll be calling them back with my personal cell phone. <laughs> okay. But it's just that, you know, if they send a message on rick.tv, I know it's, it's business dealing yes. you know with rig.tv so oh. i'll have them go to rig.tv they can get in contact with me and we can um schedule an appointment to do a demo video okay. like i did for uh pastor wallace okay. and they could see if they want to join the uh, rig tv family all right this is awesome now you said something about the fine i want to go into the finances did you have a problem you said with the funding people don't really fund others in this area so okay. did you have any problems with the that type well the finances? I, I get um the finances is in building the station yes a lot of the equipment i owned already okay we added a few pieces this here in the studio okay. but a lot of the equipment i already owned being a videographer and okay. a photographer so, and this space as well i've okay. had this space here for um about eight years. Okay. So I've been here for a while. Okay. Um, I got together with the uh, co-owner, Rick Williams. Okay. And um, shot him the idea. Uh, okay. We've always talked about doing a business venture together. Okay. And I know that he's a television host and um, he's doing, um, he'll be, we haven't recorded this show yet, but he has a show called Whatever Happened To. Okay. That we're going to be actually shooting in the next room okay. over there in his office. Um, got together with him. Mm -hmm. He liked the idea. We put the finances together mm -hmm. and just uh, launched the station. Okay, now I'm really getting into this. A lot of people have ideas, like you know, you hobbies per se, mm -hmm. and they want to know how they change it from a hobby into a business. So, got any tips on that? Keep working as it as a hobby. It's a business. It's, as soon as you get your first dollar, it's a business. Okay. If you just seen a person and say, hey, let me take your pictures. Okay. Oh, how much do you charge? Well, you just give me $10. Okay. You get $10, it's a business. Oh, okay. So a lot of people have a misconception on what a business is. 
You know, if you're exchanging money, if you offer a service and you're getting money for it, that's your business. All right. Regardless of well, how much gotta... money is at a time, okay. there's always a start point. Okay. You're not going to become a millionaire overnight. And that's you know, what we think, right. Millions, millions is made by hundreds of thousands. Hundreds of thousands is made by ten thousands. Ten thousands is made by thousands. You know, so you have to get the little bit first before you can get the big. But as long as you're growing. But so a hobby is just do it for free. But once you start making any kind of money off of it, like, hey, I have a service that I'm pretty good at. Let me start by taking pictures. Okay. Okay. I might be charging a little now, but as I grow, you know, I mean, some people like with my weddings, wedding photography is two thousand dollars. Okay. For the most, you know, people charge two thousand dollars. I was charging five hundred dollars. Okay. For I don't charge five thousand now, by the way, because I know okay. how to do it. Okay. But um, I was charging five hundred dollars because I needed people to to trust me and give me the chance. Okay. To be able to shoot their event, you know, and the confidence that hey, you know what, this guy. So just say if I did mess up, uh, it's not too bad. Okay. They're not going to be too mad because, okay. okay, you know, you can always go back. You get what you pay for. It doesn't mean that I didn't know what I was doing. Okay. It's just that I don't want to charge a person for something I can't do or okay. I don't know how to do okay. or I've never done okay. at first, you know. See, so it's like I'm going to ask another question. So someone really didn't train you how to get into this different arena from the photography or taking the wedding pictures into the the TV broadcasting area. I took a, I bought a camera about eight years ago, my okay. first camera, okay. to just do steals. Okay. Now, these cameras today, these DLSR, um, mirrorless cameras, DL, DLSRs, I believe they're called, or mirrorless cameras, which okay. the cameras we're recording with is mirrorless cameras. Um, they are primarily steels cameras, Okay. but they have great video quality to the cameras. Okay. So you have like a hybrid camera, okay. you know, you can shoot steels mm-hmm. and you can shoot video. So I started shooting steels and, you know, for years okay. I was just shooting steels and then I just start pressing record and seeing if I can, uh, take video. I did take a class in photography. Okay. It was a six week class. Um, from, it is a place in Farmington. It is Midwest Photography Workshops. Okay. Bryce Dennison is the okay. person. If anybody in the audience would like to go to a great photography school, it's okay. like the third biggest photography school in the world. Say the name again. Midwest Photography Workshops in Farmington Hills. In Farmington. So Farmington Hills on 8 Mile right off Middle Belt. Okay. Bryce Dennison. Um, I could have the number in the credits. Okay. But he has a great photography um, class. And once you take his photography one-on-one class, you are a photographer. <laughs> okay. He doesn't He doesn't mess around and just say, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit, but you got to mm-hmm. take this class and pay more money. Okay. Once you take his fundamentals class, you can go out there and get clients. Okay. On the video side, I'm self-taught. Okay. I watch YouTube videos, Udemy okay. videos, and just do trial and error and trial and error until I get it right. Okay. As well as the software to, um, I'm learning a new software right now, but the software to learn how to edit, self-talk. Now I'm going to say this. Now you can train me, right? I can. <laughs> I can train you. I have a way of doing it, but, uh, it, you know... It it might not be the right way that the book say it, but it's the results way. It's gonna give you it's gonna give you what you want in the end. So it's definitely will give you. Well, so I won't be cutting people's heads off. No, when I'm you doing, won't. All right. I'm gonna frame you up. I'm gonna set it up the way it okay. needs to be set up. Okay. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm excited because I remember someone who was close to me who did a film, and she took one class. Mm-hmm. And the next thing I know, she was doing a whole movie. So. I'm glad that we can go from there to there, and it's not a um, like a whole ten year term that you order to get yourself straight. It's all relevant. Photography and video is all relevant. It's about the framing, the exposure, 
if it's everything in focus, lock okay. focus. And the cameras are so intelligent these days. Okay. They basically work by themselves. And expensive? They're expensive. They can be expensive. Okay. And with, you can get, depending on what you want to do, you can get, I would say, a figure of at least paying $1,000. Okay. And that's just for the body. So maybe $1,500 for a system. Okay. Like the systems that we're recording with here okay. that are multitask, you know, okay. kind of a cameras, it'd be about fifteen hundred dollars. Or you can go up all the way to eight thousand, <laughs> you know, dollars. Okay. But that's gonna give you a cinematic, you'll be able to shoot a movie, a real Ooh. cinematic movie with those cameras. Okay. Just by having craft, not just having a okay. camera, having craft, okay. you know, knowing how to frame up shots. Okay. Knowing the exposure, knowing, you know, um, how to just keep things in focus and um, mm -hmm. move the camera. So th there's a lot of things that go into it. But if you want to do it and you have the desire to do it, it won't take long. Now, I want to focus back on something else you said. I remember you said something about um, doing uh, FedEx, right? Yes, I worked at FedEx. And I remember you um, doing both jobs. Yes. And you were... Not complaining, but you were really having a difficult time with this. Kind of get how? Well, as a truck driver, um, working midnights is hard. Okay. And then, you know, because I'm off Saturday and Sunday, but I'm really not off Saturday and Sunday because you go in Friday and you're actually getting off Saturday morning around mm -hmm. 11 a.m. So then I have to sleep. Mm -hmm. And then when I wake up, there's only eight hours that I can do something. Yes. You know, during the day. And then Sunday I sleep all day because I got to go in at night. Yes. So working the midnights is pretty tough with anything. Okay. You know, so, but truck driving takes a lot of hours. Okay. You know, so you're going to be, you could do 11 hours driving or whether you drive and then work on a dock, you're going to okay. work some long you're going to work some long hours. But one of the greatest directors of all time. Okay. You know, it was a show that actually, I mean, not a show, excuse me. It was an interview that actually had me in tears. Uh, James Cameron. Hmm. James Cameron is one of the most decorative directors of all time. Okay. And he was a truck driver. Oh, okay. Yes. He was a truck driver. He went to a movie set to do a delivery, and he felt his calling right there. Okay. And that touched me, you know okay. what I'm saying, because he's proof that it could be done. Okay. You know, so years later, he has some of the biggest movies of all time. Mm. Uh, one of his movies, his first movie was The Terminator. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. His biggest movie was probably Titanic. Ooh, okay. Yeah, this that's is Cameron. You say, yeah, right? James Cameron, uh, okay. director James Cameron, director writer. So his biggest movie was probably Titanic uh, or Avatar. Okay. I think it was you know because he did Avatar too, but in between there he did a lot of movies. Okay. But um, just to know that he started as a truck driver and wasn't didn't have any intent to. I mean, regardless of if it's going into a gospel arena or not mm -hmm. it's still divine i mean it's still okay. the, it's still the lord intervening right. like showing yep. you like wait a minute you need to be doing this okay and who knows where it goes from you know there he's there to take care of his family he wants to you know right and he got out of the trucking and did that oh, he was right. just able to have the natural ability to go in there and do that I do understand, too, because you were working so many weird hours, and I know you would come in and you'd be, you know, I can't do it now, I'm tired kind of a thing. And then I believe you asked the bishop for prayer. Yes. Yeah, can I go in that just a little bit? Well, I asked him a prayer a bunch of times. I don't know <laughs> which, which one it was. Well, the day that, oh, right, when I was praying about the new job. Yes. You know, and... um Everything just came together to where, you know, talking to a friend of mine and um, I seen a message on Facebook that's saying they're looking for an editor and I messaged him and like, hey, 
you know, mm -hmm. I can do that. Okay. He's like, really? Okay. Well, let me see your work. I send him my work. He said, man, send your resume in. Send my resume in and, you know, won them over. Okay. You know, just pray, you know, pray. I, I just explained to him. Okay. I don't have a college degree. Okay. But I know what I'm doing. I can figure this job out. I need, I need a chance. All right. I'm looking for chance. So, you know, God show a favor. Thank you. Thank you. You know, in these situations. Now, I can't go in there not knowing the stuff when I right. get there. I have the favor, but now I have the time off to where I can come up to speed. Okay. You know, we, I have all the tools. I need to get up to speed and be ready for it. I'm going to say this because this just popped in my mind. God will open the doors, but you got to take the chance and walk through them, and then you got to do the work that's required. Got to do the get work. inside the door. Got to do the work. It's just not going to just, you just can't sit back and say, okay, God's going to do this for me. No, you got to do some work too. Yes. Yes, you do. Because, you know, the door opening is divine, especially in this yes. position that I'm in. Okay. Okay. That worked out. You know, now, you know, the faith without works is dead. Yes. You know, so yes. I can go in there all I want to saying like, I don't have to study right now. I could just sit back mm -mm. and just relax and say, okay, when I get there, I had the faith that I'm going to just turn it on and over. it doesn't work like that. Yes. It doesn't work like that at all. And that's a lot of people's misconception. That's a lot of things that make people lazy Yes, you because they do be not lazy. understand that yes. you have to get up and do the work. And while you're doing the work, those doors are going to be open. Yes. Well, you know, so, um, going to be starting soon. I like the fact that you're emphasizing the fact that it's not, yes, God can open the door, but you have to do the work and you have to be consistent and willing to do this work. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that, oh, he opened up the door and now I'm going to have, like I, you said earlier, $10 million, you know, and, and you're going to be this big fat cat, you know, sitting on the lawn with this big house. It takes work. And a lot of people don't seem to understand that. No, they don't understand the work. It's, it takes work. First, first is the idea, and then the idea, you write it down, make yes. it plain. Okay. <laughs> you write it down, write your vision down, make it plain. Yes. Um, I was talking to a friend, um, as you know, Tim. Okay. And he was like, man, you spoke everything you want into existence. Amen. He's like, you don't even realize it. Okay. He's like, you done put yourself in all kind of positions just saying it. Okay. You know, now you all you need to do is channel that on what you want to do okay. and just speak it into existence. Come on, come on. And I started doing that. I started believing that because okay. I didn't even realize. He was like, man, you you talked yourself into all these jobs that you don't even <laughs> supposed to have. All right. And you was able to do it. And you, right. proved, you proved yourself and you said it and it, and it happened. All so right. now you need to do that for your stuff. Okay. And I did that and started following that principle and things just start opening up. This is called faith. It's called faith All with right. the works. Faith with works. With works. <laughs> we got to put that in there because a lot of people get blind. A lot of people get deaf. As soon as they hear the word faith, then their ears close because they don't hear the word works. Right. You know? Yeah. James, they, yeah. And James, it does say faith without works is dead. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. we've got to work this. Yes. So you got to believe first. And so God blessed you to take your hobby, put it into a company area, and now look at you, the owner of R-I-C-C dot TV. <laughs> Real <laughs> Internet TV. Christian Community TV. Yes, and it's religious content. So yes. We thank you for that. And I think... Um, a lot of people need to know that you also do commercials for the for the. I do commercials people. for yeah. I do commercials for small businesses. Okay. Like I said, I want to focus more on small businesses, okay. not big corporations. Okay. I have the equipment and the capability to do major videos for okay. big corporations. Okay. That's not the problem. Okay. It's that. There's other people that's out here that needs commercials too. Okay. That don't have. Five thousand dollars, right, for a commercial, right. So, for you know a third of that, mm -hmm. we can shoot. <laughs> we can shoot a commercial that's not not just a regular commercial, a commercial with the same quality. Okay. 
that everyone else has that you will be proud of that you can market on social media that you can you know you can purchase airtime on rig tv or you can um take the video and okay. and put it on public access or okay. wherever you want so we offer those affordable platforms with commercials okay um come in with a crew professional okay, okay. um on time we'll come to your location and we'll shoot a great commercial for you. and you like you said at the beginning it was like it's a uh, with Apple, we're on Apple, Roku, and Amazon Fire. Amazon Fire. Okay, mm -hmm. I have to remember these. Amen. So you can go in on Rick TV, Amazon, Apple, and yep, Rick TV. Yes. <laughs> uh, I notice on your show sometimes you say Rick TV com. No, <laughs> it's Rick TV. Period. That's it. Period. That's it. Rick TV. Or you can go to Amazon, Roku, or Fire Stick okay. and find um, Rick TV, search Rick TV, pop it up and look at the live you know, feed on there. Right. Okay. Yeah, but at the website is the way you can contact us. Okay. Yep. And I'm going to ask a question. Okay. If I miss a session, can we now pull it up in a different time area? We're going to have it, uh, for the most part, your shows, shows are going to run seven days a week. Okay. So you'll be able to find it like, you know, the block of time that you have is okay. the um, 7 a.m., 7 p.m. hour. So okay. the Abundant Faith Cathedral hour, that's what I call okay. it. Okay. 7 a.m. Uh, uh, 7 a.m. to 7 um, p.m. Okay. Every day. You take okay. catch it seven days, and after that, you'll be able to look up episodes on YouTube. Okay, on YouTube. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, after the week's over. After the seven days is over, it'll be a new episode, and then you'll um, uh, find it on YouTube. Amen. So we thank him for you because you're getting it to the communities. And a lot of people really, like you said, can't really afford these mega, what, a cash apps or, you know, think not cash apps, but cash bundles that they need in order to do what the mega churches are doing. Right. But they still need to get out there. They need to get out there. And what we're doing is we give them the quality to okay. where they look like they're big, which attracts people. Yes. People see you on TV, it's attractive to them. They might want to come. You never know who... The good thing about being on television, you can invite people to church all the time, but the good thing is being on TV, people are at TV really coming as you are. You know, church okay. say you can come as you are, but you really can't can come as you are. <laughs> I mean, you can, but, you know, you can't be too comfortable like you at home. Right. You know, so... You could be at home and you can watch it and you never know who's watching that message that might inspire them to come, you know? And so oh, the, awesome. the tele, the tele ministry is just one of the most ultimate things Okay. because you're everywhere All right. and you just never know who's watching. And this is what we're all about. We're trying to get the word out there. And this is why we've got you, Mr. Chris. Well, I appreciate that very much. To come out and tell us that we are able to put those dreams into a product. Right. And that's what it's all about. I want to thank you for coming in and watching us today. Make sure that you come in for part two. Part two of our conversation with Chris Crawford, the owner of Rick TV. Don't forget to tune in again to the show, The Total You, with me, your hostess. We'll be on at 7 to eight, yes, seven to eight for Pastor and I myself from Sunday to Saturday. Amen. So please come back in, tune in again. And we we have him Chris Crawford again to come back in to give us more information on starting up our own businesses, especially from a hobby. Bye bye.